bringing you the news and information you need from the people making a difference. This is Comcast Newsmakers. This is definitely not a handout. We're talking hand up. And in so many ways, that loan is the beginning to success. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Joe Basikia. This is Comcast Newsmakers. We're talking about actually a, a loan of sorts with Janice Kovach. She's the director of the Department of Community Affairs Division on Women. And our topic is the Micro Business Credit Program, helping women achieve success. It's great to have you here. It's nice to be here. Uh, when we talk about that first step, it's kind of like a catch-22. It's like you can't get there unless you get that first loan. Right. Uh, so what is it you're offering? Uh, this is a loan program for women who are unemployed or underemployed and who are looking to start their own business. It's a very small loan. The maximum amount is $5,000 but it goes to women who may not be able to get the traditional loan through either a bank or another micro lender. And this gives them an opportunity to get started in a business that you know, they've been looking forward to. You know you go into a downward spiral sometimes and you think you got nowhere to turn. It actually could turn out to be that this $5,000 can be the springboard to much success, can't it? Absolutely. This is a great opportunity for an individual who wants to either start a side business, um, someone who wants to start daycare in their home, a cleaning business, you know, it's an opportunity that they may not otherwise have. Let's be clear here, your government entity in many ways is part of the Garden State. You know, yes. th and this is very important to the governor. He's made it clear. Absolutely. Uh, but some people out there will be thinking, oh, there's a catch. <laughs> is there? No. Um, the women have, to, it has to be a, a business owned by a woman or at least 51% owned by a woman. Does it have to be a new business? No, it doesn't have to be a new business. It can be an existing business, one that they've started and they need some additional capital. The only thing, they're not allowed to use it to purchase real estate but they can use it to pay salaries, they can use it to buy equipment, whatever it is they might need. Difficult red tape? No, not at all. Okay. Very simple. We've uh, begun working with four organizations within the state that will work with the women to help them move along the process, understand business planning, understand the financial planning, and help them with the application process. I actually had the pleasure of interviewing the governor on the topic of, of what we could do for women. And this means a lot to him, as you know. Yes. Uh, and there is a misconception out there. Some folks would say, oh, you have to be a woman to get you know, the breaks to succeed. The truth of the matter, statistics are just the opposite, aren't they? That's why you're climbing this mountain. Absolutely. So how important is it to actually, even as a state entity, that we actually pay attention to issues like this? The small business is the crux of the state. Uh, such a large majority of individuals try to start businesses and don't have anywhere to turn. They don't have resources available to them. And Governor Corson has really made a commitment to supporting both the small business owner, the minority, and the women-owned businesses. Sometimes the numbers are scary out there that, that we're not achieving success with business as much as we wish we could. That doesn't mean that you turn your back on it. You're saying just the opposite. We need to nurture. Absolutely. We have to provide whatever support we can to help the businesses succeed in the state. This does cost. There's money that's involved, in, uh, at least temporarily, but you're saying it will pay off great dividends for the state. Absolutely. Uh, for, the, for the state and for the individuals. They become citizens who can pay taxes, who are thriving, running a thriving business. Okay, let's make the final pitch then with what time we have left here. There may be a wonderful business out there right now working so hard, trying to make ends meet, and have, you know you have great talent. Absolutely. Uh, what should they do? They should, um, they can contact our office directly in Trenton at 609-292-8840. We're also on the website at um, DCA. Then we have the four organizations that are running the programs for us, and we can give that to them over the phone. And even if they can't qualify, or ho you hope that they can, at least you're, you're going to have actually a wealth of of counseling that you could even help them with, isn't it? Absolutely. The organizations are out there to help them. Not everyone will qualify for the loan, but there'll be classes and training that will be available to the individuals. And, and if, say that right now, someone may have an idea that they just want to start even a small business, you're saying go for it. Absolutely. It's great. a great opportunity. And that website was nj.gov forward slash DCA forward slash Division of Women, D-O-W. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. This hour's newsmaker, Janice Kovach. She's the director of the Department of Community Affairs, the Division on Women. I'm Joe Basikia for Comcast Newsmakers. You can check us out, by the way, on the web as well. We are at cn8.tv.
bringing you the news and information you need from the people making a difference. This is Comcast Newsmakers. New Jersey government, what are we doing for women? Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Joe Basicchia, and this is Comcast Newsmakers. She is Janice Kovach. She's the director of the Department of Community Affairs Division on Women. We're going to talk about advocating for women. Good to see you. It's nice to be here. And in many ways, we could talk about jobs and uh, stimulation of uh, the economy, how to get businesses thriving. But it's not just that, is it? Absolutely not. Uh, the division supports a number of programs. We have our Displaced Homemaker uh, Network, where we have it, it's a place for women to go who are trying to get back into the workforce. They've suffered a financial hardship through the loss of a spouse or loss of their primary income. We also have the urban and Hispanic job centers for women who are interested in learning skills, English, English as a second language. And then the other side of our business is we deal with um, the rape care programs and the domestic, domestic violence shelters. In many ways, women are very independent. Uh, you know, it's one of the strengths of, of women. Uh, they may not necessarily know that there's places to turn to for help. Maybe they think they have to go at it on their own. And, and in many ways, that means they feel very alone. You really want to reach out to them, don't you? We have. We've been trying through, through our programs. Um, since I joined the division back in August, I've been out speaking to a number of groups, letting them know about the programs that we have and the resources that are available. We actually have put together a women's resource guide that can answer questions on any number of topics and, and gives them numbers or websites to go to, to to get additional information. Let's put one out there, domestic violence. Sometimes uh, we've done this topic on Comcast Newsmakers often. We wonder now if it's becoming a plague where people just, you know, let, let's not talk about it. And, you know, the, the, the suburbia type of uh, domestic violence where we're not going to even talk about it. You know, it's not something we should talk about. What do you say to that? It, we can we cannot continue that way. Domestic violence affects all of the communities. It affects all of the economic, social stratas. It does. It's not specific to one group. It's across the board. And the more we push it under the carpet, the more of a problem it becomes. How about the division of sexes? In many ways, some people may think, "Well, you're helping the women. What are you doing about men?" How important is it to have actually? the male sex involved in this in many ways, even if for boys. How important is it that we, we educate, uh, have them at the table? Extremely important. In fact, one of our rape care programs does a one-day session with men and high school boys to show them, you know, positive role models and let them know, let them know about the importance of, you know, valuing relationships and individuals. And there are victim, men who are victims of domestic violence. There are men who are victims of sexual assault. You know, it's not specific. It's just more prevalent. And, and when it comes to business women, uh, how important is it to be there as a hand? Not necessarily as a hand out, but a hand up. It, it, extremely important. I've been in the corporate world, and I know how hard it and how difficult it can be sometimes for women. And to know that there's a support network out there for them to utilize if they need to. Uh, I think it's key to helping them succeed. In our difficult financial times, especially as we think about our state budget, and, and of course it gets bigger and bigger, but we know we have to be counting every penny. How would you say that having a division like this, it, it's worth its weight uh, 10 times over in terms of what we put into it? How important is it to the growth of the state to make sure we concentrate on this division? It's extremely important. The women that go through some of our programs, and I use our displaced homemaker programs, some of those individuals have college degrees but have never worked before in their lives. They've never put a resume together. They don't understand the first part of what they need to do. And what we do is we help them through those transitional periods so that they that can then become economically self-sufficient. and take care of their families how they need to. It's amazing too when you sense that sometimes when we talk exactly that, it actually involves issues of domestic violence as well. Is that not, they tie in? In some cases, yes, absolutely. Well, it's great that you're there to help. Thank I'm you so much be for being with us. Thank you. This hour's newsmaker, she is Janice Kovach. She's the director of the Department of Community Affairs on the Division on Women. I'm Joe Basicchia for Comcast Newsmakers. For more information, you can check us out as well on the web. We are at www.cna.tv.